meet you. Can you tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, yes, yeah, hi. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Thomas Werner. I'm um, in the IT department of the city of Münster and um, my um, official job title is Open Data Coordination. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to collect uh, the open data inside uh, of the um, local government here and publish it on our open data portal and also um, connect with the local community, also with other cities around uh, so we can, yeah, like do the same stuff uh, and not everybody invents uh, the, the wheel um, new. Um, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So it's really interesting to talk to you since there's now an English version of hashtag ODFA. But you were involved with the government institution which developed the first workshop in the city of Munster. Can you tell us how that day went? Uh, yeah. Um, actually, also uh, the, the preparation of the day was also very cool. Um, we were like uh, finding out which um, local um, NGOs uh, here in Munster are relevant um, or are there because I mean they are all relevant, relevant. and uh, then um, we had them invited and uh, they were like showing up and um, after um, some time for like greeting and uh, looking who's coming and having a little bit of chat uh, with the people um, we started um, the, the workshop and um, as we had like all the materials were uh, prepared by, by Mario and, uh, and Nathan. And um, so we had a um, yeah, pretty good plan how, how we would um, go through the day. And um, Mario and me were taking turns uh, with um, uh, presenting all the content. And um, Mario was like uh, taking notes and uh, filming and taking pictures. I said Mario, right? <laughs> <laughs> I meant uh, Nathan. Um, and Nathan was uh, taking uh, pictures and filming. And so, um, well, yeah, um, the people um, like it was uh, the people could follow very well what uh, with the content and um, we had um, then some interaction parts um, which were also um, yeah very cool because uh, we got lots of um, comments um, from the audience and uh, they were um, yeah really um, interested uh, in also uh, the topics itself and um, uh, in uh, like getting uh, networking with the others. So um, um, that's also a feedback that we, that we got afterwards that the networking was also a very um, good part of the whole thing because um, these um, organizations that we invited um, from an open data point of view, they all match our topic of NGOs but uh, otherwise they, they hadn't connected before in, uh, in that way. So um, it was also a nice networking event. And um, yeah, so that was then when we uh, had our lunch, uh, which was the sponsored. Uh, that was really cool to have. Uh, so they, we could meet downstairs and um, sit on the tables and, and talk about the, the content and also about all the other topics uh, that arised um, yeah, um, and that's basically um, how it went. And uh, after the lunch, um, we did more uh, interactive um, sessions and had um, cool like uh, whiteboards um, with, um, for example, um, all the open data um, data sets that would be interesting for uh, for the um, NGOs, um, which was also for me, in uh, after the event, a pretty valuable um, asset, so I could see what what do they need, what do they want. Uh, yes. Brilliant. Um, so, can you tell us how the workshop may have influenced your future work? 
Um, yes. Um, as um, I mean, I started uh, with the open data topic, uh, like just a year before the workshop, and um, um, it's super important to to know your local um, communities and why they use open data. Uh, that is one thing, and the other thing is to to tell them how they can use open data, um, because many they just don't know it uh, and. Um, it's a very special interest topic. So um, this uh, workshop, um, I learned lots of um, people, like from the networking side, from the local NGOs. Uh, they would otherwise they wouldn't have been on my on my uh, table, you know. And um, the other thing um, is um, the the examples they gave how they already use open data, uh, like. Um, there, there were already um, local NGOs that really use statistical data for their um, marketing purposes, like look in which uh, parts of the city uh, are more older people and younger people, so they can um, accordingly try to um, yeah, speak to this, uh, these uh, audiences. And um, they already did that kind of stuff. I, I would never have expected that. And they already used uh, our um, free plans, maps of the city to do uh, planning for extensions of their um, uh, buildings, uh, that kind of examples. That was um, really cool. So I, I could then later use these um, uh, use cases for open data also internal uh, for my work uh, and could say okay listen the the local NGOs they need this data because they are using it so um, yeah that was really cool um, these, these two parts um, of the event um, and also yeah collecting um, the contacts of uh, the people to follow up yeah brilliant um, so how important do you believe it is that local governments create digital outreach in regards to encouraging more local NGOs to use open data for social good? Um, you mean uh, we, um, we uh, that we like connect to these um, local NGOs? Um, yeah, like, do you, why do you think it's important that NGOs know how to use open data? Yeah, um, I mean, that's um, totally um, the basic reasons uh, that, that, are, that apply for everyone. I mean, um, you have uh, the chance to um, base your decisions on um, yeah, real data that's out there and uh, you can then um, uh, like make more um, relevant decisions uh, because you, you have data to, to back it up. So, um, I mean, um, that is a very yeah. important thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, um, sorry. Yeah, take digital outreach in regards to getting more social good. Now I still don't really get the question, but <laughs> no, it's okay. I think I think you answered the question. Don't worry. Right. Okay. Um, so moving slightly away from hashtag ODFA, you're responsible for Code for Munster, which is a volunteer meetup of students, activists, and community-minded people who, using code and social issues, to create digital community projects. It's specifically interesting in your case, as you are both an activist and a government worker. Can you tell me how important this is in line with your work at the city of Munster? Yes, um, I mean, the, the um, Code for Munster um, organization itself, I mean, it's not really an organization. It's just a few people are meeting regularly, which are interested in uh, open data or in like programming little projects. Um, and it's also very changing um, uh, kind of people. Um, you never know who's who's showing up. Um, and 
I mean, we are a bit, it's, it's really lucky that we have a, a group like that here in Münster because so we, we get more attention on the open data. So, and, um, but um, yeah, it's also, it's very um, um, cool to have these uh, little projects that they do because that's always something that I can show and so I can say look, uh, to the, I mean, to the public and internally in the um, government, local government, I can say, yeah, they, they did this and this is a new case uh, of, of use of our data. And also, um, most of these things, they really um, bring some uh, additional value uh, for, for the city. Like uh, before, there was no um, cool visual application where you can see where are the um, public dustbins for paper and um, or for glass and that's something that everybody in Münster needs regularly and that's uh, that are questions that are coming in and um, yeah so um, they they all already find always find some cool ways to um, to use the data and um, yeah so um, and with my background with doing this myself um, before I changed into the um, city of Münster and yeah, I'm also still doing it. Um, I also have a, a good technical background. This helps in lots of cases. Um, to, to know how, how are they doing it, what do they need? Because um, open data, it's after all, it's just data. And um, it's it's good to know um, how is this used on a, on a technical level. Um, in, in many cases, when people ask about the data and about the data usage and have problems with it, um, this uh, has been valuable to me in, in the local, uh, working in the local government that I exactly know how it's, so how they want it to, to work on a technical level because in the government, many people, they are not so uh, on the technical level, they are more like on the, um, yeah, the, um, data security and the business level of data, but um, you need to have like um, uh, API uh, interfaces so the data can be accessed. And um, yeah, you need to, to transform our secure data into open data by removing data from it and just opening the, da the data that uh, the um, government wants um, and not the secret data, obviously. And these kinds of processes, um, yeah, so I think um, having those both two heads um, helped me uh, a bit. And um, also from the part of connecting with the community, that's also a thing, but I, I think that's not so important. I mean, um, I know other cities um, where the people are the open data coordination people from the city. They are just going to the to those meetups, and they are also connecting them maybe even in a better way than me because they are they have more the the head of the I am the city official in this meetup, and then I they they are doing other things. They are more like trying to steer the group in their direction and. Um, when there's not so many people, then they are trying to support uh, um, this from a governmental um, point of uh, view in, in other ways um, than that I am doing it right now, because uh, in some way, um, yeah, it's also uh, this, if I do too much in this uh, Code for Münster uh, group, then it also looks uh, strange. So, okay, this guy is the open data coordinator, but he's also programming all this stuff. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, as you know, the ODFA toolkit does have resources to help facilitators to sorry to help facilitators to set up their own civic tech meetups after running their workshop to keep the more informal engagement going around open data, especially with AtSphere. But as a professional who's really experienced in this, could you give us any tips on the best way people could approach setting up their own meetups? Yeah, 
Um, I mean, this uh, the the stuff is already pretty good. I mean, uh, um, because it depends so much on your local um, environment and on the way you want how you want to do this. Um, I think um, that is um, something that you should all, all, uh, always consider because, I mean, in my case, um, because of, um, yeah, um, I had to, um, we, we didn't do the follow-up meeting group with, with the NGOs um, and um, because that's, uh, yeah, due to um, administrative reasons, uh, I was advised not to do it. I mean, I'm not alone, but I have bosses that <laughs> decide about what I can do and what not. So, um, and um, I can, but uh, still, if you uh, want to uh, do meetups, it's um, always um, uh, good to just um, use the tools that are already there to uh, try to digitally connect. Um, with um, these people, because that's all, uh, also a very um, important part of, of doing um, following up. Like uh, you have the emails, so uh, yeah, set up an email list so you can can regularly contact them. Um, you don't always have to just meet them because um, in um, follow up uh, meetups, you will already um, see that there's less uh, people coming. Um, and you also will have to find new people. So um, you um, might want to set up some digital, uh, like on meetup.com. I mean, I don't want to say meetup.com, but it's uh, because it's, it's, it's really gotten a bad platform, <laughs> but it's, um, it is where people look uh, to, to find local meetups. Um, if you have other um, ways in your um, city to um, contact the local um, people, then use uh, the according digital platforms. Um, yeah, so um, that you um, still have enough um, people that will be there uh, and will be coming to you to the meetup. Um, Yes, yeah. maybe yes. Brilliant. Um, so finally, from your own experience, um, why do you believe government workers around the world should download and run the ODFA? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, you get um, for free uh, the possibility to um, um, get new insights um, about your local um, community and um, to um, um, yeah, make new um, contacts and um, networking, um, and it's um, just it's very easy to um, to perform it. Yeah, perfect. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about at all before I end the recording? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's also very important um, if you're in a local government um, to um, make sure that you have the possibilities to um, open the data in, in your um, yeah in the different parts of the government. So um, for everybody who's um, working on open data in, in local governments, I uh, can, would really like to um, say they need to make sure that the contracts uh, that are written and the software that is uh, um, bought, that these have um, the contracts, they sometimes forbid that the data is opened uh, as open data. I mean, that is really bad if you have these kinds of contracts uh, in, within your city. And also, if you cannot access the data that is in your applications um, because they don't have um, any API um, interfaces, that's also very bad. So then you, you cannot work with your own data. Um, so um, that's just something that I 
<laughs> we give as a recommendation to really um, work on that first, uh, to make sure that um, all around the city, so many people are uh, doing contracts and they are not into this topic. There needs to be um, citywide um, a recommendation how to make these contracts. Thank you.